What is going on everybody? It is so good to be back with some Madden content, the much anticipated realistic rebuild of the Carolina Panthers. Uh, before we hop in here, guys, please do hit that like button down below. It, it really helps me out, helps support the channel, helps share this series, this video, everything. It, it goes so much further than you know, just that little like button. I uh, can't even really explain it, but it really helps me out. So please do that for this video and each installment of the series as we go. All right, so let's go through the rules of the rebuild here. I, I had to do it. I mean, come on. So this is a realistic rebuild here. What does that mean? Realistic moves, realistic trades. If I have to interfere with the not so realistic Madden game engine here, I will do it. Whether that's increasing the amount of money I have to pay guys for what they're asking for if it's unrealistic, forcing trades, uh, editing development traits that I think were earned or not earned. So we will be doing a lot of that stuff as we go. Just know that it is all in the integrity of realism, trying to protect basically what Matt Rule and the, these Carolina Panthers are gonna face from a team building perspective over the next four to six years. And I'll talk about kind of how long we're gonna go here, how we're gonna do that in just a second. But uh, the last thing you say, we're gonna be using my uh, custom roster. Most of you are familiar with it. It is designed for a realistic franchise experience. If you are unfamiliar with it, I will drop a link down below. I'm not gonna to get too far into that in this video right here, but definitely check that out if you are new so you understand uh, kind of what we're dealing with here with the roster. And then I will be using my own custom draft classes as well. I am going to be asking a community member to be doing the development traits for those, so I don't know who the hidden gems are, so to speak. Uh, and then, like I said, let's let's talk about what we're gonna do for the depth and how long we're gonna go here. So uh, it's gonna be a four-year rebuild here on YouTube. Uh, the first two seasons, we are going to be doing uh, s uh, playing every divisional game in our Play the Moments mini game, which means uh, three Play the Moments with a maximum of one full drive. We are also going to be doing one game of offense only, the full game, and then one game of only the fourth quarter, both sides of the ball. And then I am adding a couple things here that we haven't done in the past. So. Uh, any breakout scenario that we are to get for our players, this is going to be another kind of new mini game. It's going to be really cool. Uh, we're going to do 15 snaps for that player, which is going to be really fun. So adding that this year. And then um, just because there's a lot of times where I end up kind of breaking my own rules and, and playing in the last two minutes, I'm going to keep this simple. At any moment, I am now going to be allowed to play inside the two minute warning of any game that I'm playing in, unless it's one of those breakout scenarios, we'll keep it to just that player. Um, but that's just, you know, from an entertainment standpoint, a lot of times um, it, it you just can't just leave it. In those last two minutes, the suspense is too high. So we're gonna say uh, two minute warnings you can now play at will. Uh, and then uh, 2022 and 2023, so years three and four, uh, we're gonna mix it up, uh, speed up the pace a little bit because views do drop off. Um, about halfway through here, uh, we're gonna do six division games full play the moment. So not the mini games playing every play the moment inside every divisional game. We will keep doing those breakout scenarios. And then if we are to make the playoffs in, in any of these, I would expect that at some point we will be making the playoffs. Um, round one is five play the moments with two full drives. Round two goes to four play the moments with one full drive. Then we have our traditional mini game for the conference championship. If we make the Super Bowl, however, we do get the full play of the moment. So all of that is just to kind of keep the thing moving, of course, but also to get a good healthy balance of gameplay, fun kind of mini games, and relying on our roster building as well and the simulation engine to really build up a, a good team. And it's not just me, you know, kicking the computer's ass every time. So that's how this thing's going to go. And then uh, one last thing I need to say here, I will go through the sliders before we fully hop in here. But um, it, the 2024 and 2025, so that's year uh, five and six. I'm gonna say if I get a thousand likes in the very final video of this series, I will do a two year stream going through year 2024 and 2025, probably pretty similar format to years three and four there. Uh, so that's gonna be exciting. It'll be a big grand finale. I will upload that here eventually. But uh, while we're on that topic, I do wanna say guys, if you enjoy my rebuild content, you wanna see more, there's no sports on TV right now, you need all that. Um, I do encourage you guys, check out my second YouTube channel. It's TFG Plays. 
Right now I have two online leagues that are realistic just like this. Um, I am playing as the Chiefs. We're in, heading into year seven of the TFGO League. And um, we just launched TFGO 20.5 where I'm taking over the Tom Brady less Patriots, which has been a ton of fun. So uploading those streams, make sure you follow those streams on my Twitch. Uh, all those links are down below. And then I'm gonna be starting a new series, not unlike this one. It's not gonna be quite as refined and concise, but um, a little more fan interactive through my Twitch that will be uploaded there on TFG Play. So I, I did wanna throw those plugs in there. There's plenty of other content out there. Just wanna make sure you're aware of my TFG Plays account and my Twitch, uh, where there's a lot of other great stuff going on. So uh, let's run through the sliders here, and then we are really gonna kick this thing off. I do appreciate you listening to me ramble here. So the gameplay sliders here, I, I always tell people I am a rosters guy, not a sliders guy. These are my own sliders. Um, I'm just putting these here because I get dozens and dozens of comments every time I do these series. What are your sliders? What are your sliders? Well, go back to episode one, check this out. There you go. This is, you know, my own personal, basically feelings about this. I, you know, it's, sliders are different for everyone. This is gonna be on um, all pro, not all Madden. Uh, so there you go. There's those settings and then the XP sliders are gonna be right here um, There you go, you know, I lowered them. I think they're a little high. We also will not be doing Training we're gonna keep a, an equal playing field with the rest of the computers out there as far as the training goes uh, just gonna set the focus players every year and Let's put it on auto from that point on. So here we go. Let's hop into this thing and rebuild these Carolina Panthers. So thanks for listening to the intro, guys. And there's a lot to kind of address before we get started. But welcome to the new regime here in Carolina under Matt Rule, where we're going to be implementing sort of that big 12 philosophy, a spread offense, hit them all over the place. Uh, and kind of follow Cliff Kingsbury a little bit, who had some offensive success in year one coming from that Big 12 offense. And then defensively, down the road, we might try to get a little more creative. Think about that 3-3-5 Big 12 defense. But for now, we have a ton of youth on this defense, a ton of moving pieces, a lot to figure out. We're going to slow things down here, go with a base 4-3-4 four, four now. I actually stick with Carolina's playbook and just kind of keep everything in front of us and figure out who can really play and play fast here on this defense. Now, this is certainly a rebuild type of season. Now, that doesn't mean we're tanking specifically for Trevor Lawrence. We do want to try and win. Uh, so everything we're doing is going to be in an effort to win right away, but we do know that it's probably not gonna happen in year one, but you never really know. Uh, so let's preview the roster here. And then we're gonna do, make some signings and then do our cuts. We'll get to week one, set the depth chart and be on our way. As far as the offense is concerned, we've got a ton of moving pieces on this offense. The offensive line, a lot of different parts coming around here. So we got versatility, you know, Greg Little, is he a guard, is he a tackle? Okung, is he gonna be healthy? Is he gonna stick around here? John Miller coming in. Um, it's not a bad offensive line, but definitely pieces to completely figure out, especially at guard and left tackle. Tight end is a mess. Ian Thomas is going to have an opportunity to really prove himself this year, his third year uh, after Greg Olson is now leaving. So he's got a chance to really step up, but he is on a short leash. And it's definitely a position we're looking to address. Wide receiver, we got some, some fun players here. Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, a lot of speed. Even Christian McCaffrey's gonna line up in the slot. Could maybe use a little power at running back. And then the quarterback situation. Yeah, well, we, we're very familiar here. Cam Newton's on his way out. Teddy Bridgewater is in for three years, maybe. We got PJ Walker, the XFL superstar, was surely going to be the XFL MVP. Does he push Teddy Bridgewater if Teddy doesn't step up early and often? And then Will Greer is still hanging out here. So offensively, just a ton of things to figure out. But this team in this front office has done a great job bringing in some youth and excitement on this defense. And this D-line really gets you excited. You got great interior threats here. Now, Derek Brown, just that normal development here, but a very high floor pick to start the building of this team here. An excellent run defender. Hopefully can emerge as a, a threat as a pass rusher as well. He's got K1 short next to him to help out. And then the edge guys, Brian Burns, Etor Gross Matos, really hoping for some development and growth in their games. 
uh, as we go here. So the D-line is kind of set, at least for a year or two. We're really happy with what we have there. Now, linebacker needs almost immediate help. We got to hear Whitehead, Jermaine Carter, Andre Smith. That's really it. And next to Shaq Thompson, obviously, who's not going anywhere. And then this secondary is a major question. I think we could really benefit from some veteran here uh, in the secondary to contribute right away as Troy Pride kind of develops here. We could also use some slot help. So that's going to be something we're looking at right away um, off the street. And then the safety room is interesting. We do have Trey Boston here. He's been here for a while. Kenny Robinson, another kind of XFL dart throw, um, was kicked out of West Virginia as a sophomore. Uh, and decided not to kind of return to the NCAA, just went to the XFL, ended up being a, what, a fifth round pick here for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, could very well replace Trey Boston long term as that free safety is if he develops. Uh, and then Justin Burris and Jeremy Chin. Now, Jeremy Chin, a second round pick here. Is he going to be a Jamal Adams type of freak here? Is he really going to grow and develop out of Southern Illinois with a lot to prove? Or is he going to be the next TJ Green? Another you know, kind of scary comparison for Jeremy Chin, TJ Green, coming out of Clemson, a second round pick, 6'3", 215, a freak athlete. You know, Josh Jones, the Green Bay Packers comes to mind. There's uh, Sua Cravens. There's been players like this. Taylor Mays, a lot of freak athletes that get you excited in the pre-draft process that don't turn into anything. Can Jeremy Chin buck the trend? Or is he going to be the exception to the rule? Well, we'll find out. He's going to have a great opportunity here in that strong safety room. So plenty of room to grow, but it's not all for naught. Like this team is, is not screwed in year one. So let's take a look at the free agent market here. Um, quarterback, we're good. We're not interested in bringing Cam Newton back. We're done trying to figure out that shoulder and if he's going to be able to throw the ball more than 15 yards ever again. So we're not going to deal with that. We'll let someone else take a chance on Cam Newton. Now at running back, I did mention that we would love to bring in some power here. And uh, Gus Edwards gets released by the Baltimore Ravens. They brought in J.K. Dobbins, so no need for him. Um, that is kind of exactly what we need, kind of a goal line bruiser to relieve and take some pain off of Christian McCaffrey. Uh, a lot of pressure on him right now with that running back room. Wide receiver, I actually think we're pretty good. I kind of like the guys they've brought in, so I think we're actually pretty good here. I'm not seeing any names that really stand out to me at the top. So we're going to stay put at wide receiver for now. At tight end, we do need help. Um, Jermaine Gresham, a big 12 guy here. I think that uh, Matt Rule has, has shown kind of a propensity to, to show some bias for those big 12 players and uh, certainly guys out of Baylor and Temple, not that that applies here, but I do want to bring in a veteran there, Jermaine Gresham off the street. And then at tackle, offensive line, we've got so many moving pieces here. I don't know if we really want to mix it up anymore. I mean, Ryan Khalil <laughs> is still trying to play here, but uh, I'm not really interested in that. We've got Paradise at center. So I think we're actually going to stay put on the offensive line for now. And then as far as the D line goes, I also think we're really in good shape. So we're going to stay put on the D-line for now. Um, as long as there's no surprising releases here. But I, I, I think we're good there. Linebacker, definitely somewhere we want to look. Most of these guys are kind of edge threats, not a need. Let's look at middle linebacker Thomas Davis, released from the Washington Redskins. Patrick Owasu. We saw that linebacker room. It is not pretty. Thomas Davis tried to make it there in Washington, but a crowded, crowded room. Um, with Ruben Foster coming back. They've drafted some players there. So he does not make the cut in Washington. If he still wants to play, why not come back to Carolina? Have a, you know, retirement tour here. Come back home. Teach up this young group. I, I think he would actually do this. I think this is fun and realistic. So we're going to do that. Bring Thomas Davis back for one last ride here. Uh, and then uh, how about a, a young guy in Joe Giles Harris? Uh, pretty local out of Duke. Gets released from Jacksonville. Let's bring him in to compete. Uh, kind of an athletic, smaller linebacker there. Compete at outside linebacker. So I like those signings. And then we need help in the secondary. Is it a Jonathan Joseph, a local South Carolina guy, still trying to play, 35 years old. He can do everything we want with that zone coverage. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring Jonathan Joseph in here. I actually really like that a lot. Uh, he was not useless <laughs> for the Texans, so that gives us immediate help in a quality corner. Um, and I could see that being a great landing spot for him. 
Um, and then slot corner is another pretty big need for us. So let's see if we can find anyone that would fill that need for us. Maybe some youth potentially. How about we go with, uh, hmm, anyone get, ooh, Jimmy Moreland. A little letter of recommendation from Ron Rivera. Send him down the road to Carolina maybe. Let's do that. I, I like that. Um, James Madison, is that? That's got to be pretty local too, right? I like that signing a ton. He might start in the slot for us, for God's sake. Uh, at safety, George Odom does not make the cut. Now, we have a pretty crowded safety room, but one more guy and a guy that would be a stud on special teams might not hurt. Let's at least, you know, give him a tryout here before our cuts. Strong safety work, definitely good, though, because we've got Burris, who we signed with a three-year extension, and... Uh, Jeremy Chin. So we're going to roll with that being our kind of free agent wave here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut uh, our players here. We're starting in week four, by the way, because I had to do a lot to make sure that these rookies all made the teams. That's if you've played with this roster in Madden 20, you understand. Um, so we're missing the first few weeks of the preseason. That's fine. It saves some time anyway. We don't do much in those days anyway. Uh, so the quarterback room, we're going to keep all three. At running back, I think Jordan Scarlett is going to have to get the practice squad here after we brought Gus Edwards in. We're going to release Reggie Bonifan. And then we'll see about the fullback. Let's clean up these uh, lower level wide receivers here. I think we'll roll with these six, right? Two, three, four, five, six guys at wide receiver. I like it. We are going to keep the long snapper. It is a realistic rebuild. After all, we're going to let man hurts the bottom tight ends here go. We'll roll with those three. And then at left tackle, we are going to cut Matt Caskey, kind of a undrafted street for agent that doesn't really have a spot here. We'll roll with those guys on the interior at tackle. I think we're actually going to keep all those guys around like we've set a lot of moving pieces on that offensive line. On the edge, a deep group. Definitely don't need Chris Smith. Christian Miller, definitely someone to keep an eye on. A third-round pick out of Alabama, I believe. Marquise Haynes, I think it's time to let him go. He has not developed at all here. So we're going to roll with these five on the edge. F.A. Obata, another guy to keep an eye on. Making that full transition here to a defensive end in a 4-3. Can he play a rotational role here and have an impact? Uh, a fan favorite of sorts. Woodrow Hamilton, time to go. We're going to roll with these four at defensive tackle. Uh, we'll cut the ghost of Luke Keekley here. And then the linebacker room is a train wreck. I am going to uh, convert Thomas Davis back to outside linebacker. I'm actually really excited that we got Thomas Davis back. I think that's a great locker room signing. Uh, it's good for him as well to make a little money on the back end of his career here. Uh, so we're going to roll with that group at linebacker. We're going to go ahead and practice squad Jordan Kunisek. Kunisek? Kunisek? Uh, there we go. There's the linebacker room. Uh, the corners. I like how this group is shaping out all of a sudden with Joseph at, at, as a veteran presence. Hopefully Jackson can come along, boost that zone coverage up a little bit. We'll develop Troy Pride over time. Jimmy Moreland can start in the slot. Jimmy Tom uh, Stanley Thomas Oliver, not a bad developmental piece. And then with us getting Moreland, I am going to practice squad Corn Elder and release Cole Luke. And then we have four more cuts to make. The Trell Jamerson not going to make the squad here. I am going to keep George Odom around for now. I think Quinn Blanding is going to catch the practice squad, as is... TJ Green. I just, I think that getting Chin and Burris, we are not going to have much of a need for TJ Green. Unless we were to use him as more of a linebacker here. We do have two kickers on the roster. I'm going to go with Graham Gano. I think he was injured last year. That's what led to Sly coming in. So one more cut to make, but seeing our tight end room just a minute ago, I, uh, do have my eye on one little guy here that I think may have not made the team. An undrafted free agent in Harrison Bryant. Getting cut from the Detroit Lions. Didn't even make their practice squad. I think he is very consistent with kind of these flex tight ends that we're going to be seeing in this offense. Kind of half wide receiver, half tight end. And in this offense, this Big 12 offense, I think he's actually an excellent fit here and could just be our best tight end. Uh, so I do want to bring him in. And because of that, I'm going to let the fullback go. 
And that's because Hunter Bryant, 6'2", Ian Thomas, 6'3", Seth the Valve, 6'3". These guys can play some fullback in those packages. We're gonna let Armagh go, uh, who I think even started as a tight end. So we're gonna let him go. And that leaves us with one more cut to make, and I think it's gotta be TJ Green. I just don't think we've got room for him. We've got five other safeties that we like. I will practice squad him in case we do wanna call him up, but uh, I think that's where we're gonna go. There, That's the squad, there's the team. Let's go ahead and do these upgrades, and we'll be on our way into the start of the regular season. Let's do a zone upgrade for Dante Jackson. Nice. Curtis Samuel, definitely a prove-it season for Curtis. He's on the last year of his contract. Prove-it year for Ian Thomas as well. I'm actually going to go blocking because, you know, if he could really improve that blocking over the preseason year, that'd be nice. Uh, he is not even going to get one run block out of that upgrade. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Hunter Bryant's going to be pushing for that job hot and heavy right away. And then Keith Kirkwood. Uh, definitely not someone to completely forget about here. He's had his moments for the New Orleans Saints. So there's the uh, there's the 53. Let's go ahead to week one. Got a couple more upgrades here. Tyler Larson at center. I'm actually going to just automate him and Chris Reed. But Andre Smith, I absolutely want to do this. Now he's, what, the third year on this team. He was a seventh round pick. I actually liked him a lot coming out of North Carolina. He could get an opportunity here this Linebacker room is just not ideal. Uh, but let's set our season goal for wins. Like I said, it's it's a rebuild here. I'm trying to win, but let's just say I'm going to set the goals low internally and set them high externally. Let's use this year to figure things out. We are definitely going to do our best to try and win here. Um, so let's go ahead and set that depth chart for a winning season. I'm gonna start by automating the order. Um, just gonna kind of stop and talk as I scroll here if there's any surprises. So at tight end, I do wanna start Ian Thomas, making Gresham the second guy, which is gonna push DeValve and Bryant into that fullback role. But you know, definitely keep an eye on Harrison Bryant here. If Ian Thomas doesn't step up early, we're gonna be making a depth chart change. Now wide receiver, I think that's that's pretty accurate. Um, I think we're good, good to go there with that group. And then the offensive line should be in place as I scroll through it here. You know, Okung there at at, uh, at left tackle is hopefully going to just stay healthy for the year. But that's definitely a position we need to fix over time. Good to go. And really, this entire depth chart shouldn't be too many question marks, but just kind of scrolling through for one last look. We will start to hear Whitehead at middle linebacker. But if he doesn't play well, uh, definitely Andre Smith and... Joe Giles Harris, our guys, we're going to want to keep an eye on there. And then at corner, that looks pretty good. We're going to start Jimmy Moreland as our slot. Uh, Troy Pride's just going to have to kind of earn his way onto the field. I, I do like him, but he's just not ready. And then at free safety, we've got Trey Boston. We're going to do Kenny Robinson as the second free safety, strong safety. I am going to start Jeremy Chin. He's a second-round pick. Let's see what he can do. I'm going to ask Curtis Samuel to return kicks here for us and punts. Definitely don't need Christian McCaffrey getting hurt unnecessarily there. Make sure our long snapper is actually our long snapper. Third down running back, we're good. Power half back, that looks pretty good actually. In the slot, I am going to go with Curtis Samuel. Seth Roberts has some experience in the slot. Make DJ Moore the third guy just in case. As far as the rush ends, Brian Burns on the left side. Of course, Madden wants Thomas Davis on the right side. Why not? Uh, no, we're going to go Yitor Gross Matos. And then the rush tackle, there you go. Derek Brown, K1 short, sub linebacker, Thompson. And we actually would like that to be Thomas Davis. And then Jeremy Chin, certainly going to get some, some opportunities to sub in as that dime linebacker, depending how we feel about Thomas Davis. And then slot corner, not George Odom, we're going to go with... Jimmy Moreland, and then I'm gonna use Troy Pride as the second slot corner there. All right, there is your depth chart. Now we play the Rams week one. We're dealing with Aaron Donald. I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and use that fourth quarter playage because I think we have time in this episode to get that in there. Now I wanna to commit to slowing Aaron Donald down. You're never gonna be able to take him away entirely, but let's see what goal that gives us. Two or fewer sacks, we can do that, right? It's just one player. So 76 overall team, we actually stack up pretty well to a good team like the LA Rams. Hoping for the best, man. We're going to sim to the fourth quarter of this game. We'd be uh, 
pretty sweet to come away with a win here in the first week of the season. Go Panthers, come on. <laughs> Wishing for the best. Ooh, we got a touchdown. Nice, tie game. Low scoring game. That young defense is stepping up early, 14-7. Teddy Bridgewater goes to tie it up at, before half. All right, we're gonna, have a, we're gonna have an exciting fourth quarter here to play. We got the lead to protect. Let's slow this get down, go to the next quarter. And here we go. All right, off to a good start. Good job, Panthers, and we're on offense. All right, all right. So, second and five, we're actually driving here. Little dig concept. Oh, Teddy. Come on, put it on him. Good read, but a bad throw. Let's go slants here. Be careful with the football. We're close to field goal range. Not that a field goal does a ton for us in this moment. Here comes the blitz, and there you go. Good job. Good job. It's almost like Drew Brees taught you a thing or two about how to throw a slant there. Teddy Bridgewater, nice throw. I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised that we are sitting here with a two-score lead driving on the LA Rams. That would indicate that this team had a great offseason and is ready to compete right away. That, that Matt Rule's off to a good start. Oh, Teddy, come on. Try to low point it. All right, third and eight after the misfire. Potential blitz here, man coverage maybe. Robbie Anderson running that out route, but it is Jalen Ramsey. Don't know if we want to throw that. Um, I actually don't love this look at all. I might call a timeout as the head coach here. All right, now we might be getting a blitz. I'm going to check Samuel to run to the sticks there. Here comes the blitz. Thomas, nice little back shoulder, finding it before you run the corner route. Leonard Floyd can't catch up. And look at Ian Thomas. We talked a lot about him, but six receptions, 76 yards, a touchdown, I think I saw. That's what we need to see from you, Ian. All right, we're getting an inside shade here from that slot corner. I wonder if this might be a blitz. No blitz. Ian Thomas and Teddy Bridgewater looking like a fun connection, but... Can't come down with that one. Second and 10, let's run it with Christian here. Ooh, making, making your boy Donald miss. Christian McCaffrey doing his thing. 22 carries, 123 yards after getting that contract extension in the offseason, proving that running backs just might matter. Let's see if we can have a critical third down running this angle route. We know he's good at that. And you know we're going to hit him, but he didn't quite get it. That is a Teddy Bridgewater stat line right there if I've ever seen it. 21 for 30, 220 yards. We're going to go ahead and take the field goal here and play defense. We ate up a lot of clock there. There's a sack, and look who it is, Derek Brown. Doing jumping jacks. There you go, big boy. That's what we need to see. All right, single back. Get there. Whew. Just a slight misfire from Jared Goff, who is not having the best day. All right, run a little man coverage. Third and 17. Wow, Jared Goff, yikes. And they are going to go for it. This would basically be a death sentence. I'm surprised that they're going to go for it here. This seems like an obvious punt situation, but blitz in that corner. 
And another misfire from Jared Goff. Wow, an utter collapse. Man, can you talk about a hot seat if Jared Goff had this start against a Panthers team that does not have a lot of hype? Ah, looks like we might get a hold here. Good run, though. Greg Little at right guard with the hold. This feels like a likely blitz. Keep McCaffrey in the block. Pick it up. Oh no. Luckily Rapp just batted at that. I thought it was a zero, but Taylor Rapp was there. I don't know why he was there, but he was. It was a zero blitz. Try to get him on the double move. Teddy just misfired. It's not his uh it's not his strong suit. Get rid of it. Well, not making the most of this. I think we should actually just run this. Kick the field goal, take a 16 point lead. Wow. Oh my God, Christian McCaffrey. What a run. Oh my goodness. He's making an early MVP case after getting paid. Whoa. What a run. I did not expect that. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, this is this is not the start I anticipated, but very happy with the uh, the results so far. Oh, and almost a pick there from Dante Jackson. Come on, D. Let's get us a stop. Ah, the check down. See, Jared Goff is going with the garbage time approach. Come on, guys, tackle. Tick, tick, tick. Jared can't keep taking two or three yards at a time. Or can he? All right, enough of that. Let's, let's do a little lurking here with Jeremy Chin. Oh, tried to shoot the gap. Really, a run. Are you going to go hurry up? Probably not. They don't care. They, they've conceded. Maybe the Rams are tanking for Trevor to give him to the Jacksonville Jaguars because they have their pick. Nice. Way to lose two yards. Come on, someone someone give us a pick. Jared's desperate. Yeah, they really don't care. Nice tackle. Jimmy Moreland. Fourth down, two minute warning. We know what they want to do. Come on, Jeremy. Cut him off. Nothing short. Oh, what a catch. Ooh, another sack for Derek Brown. At least someone on this defense is showing up. Oh, come on, Chin. Just threw it up for grabs for you. Well, I think that uh, that's going to do it here. A 1-0 and start for the Carolina Panthers. Who would have guessed? Christian McCaffrey kind of putting the team on his back this week. Teddy Bridgewater, very Teddy performance, like 200 yards on like 20 completions. No interceptions. Very game manager-esque, but that's all you really need. Ian Thomas stepped up. Derek Brown, so... The narratives are already starting to form here. That's going to do it for our first episode. I do plan on getting episode two up to you guys tonight here on YouTube. Please do hit that like button. Cheers as always. And we'll see you for the next one. Peace.